Hey guys, welcome back. If you are not familiar with our off-grid cabin build project, then you can click this playlist right up here and you can follow along from the very start. So I'm getting ready to go outside and check my office cabin out. I did heavily seal the ridge vents as much as I could. We had a giant snowstorm and there's like eight inches of snow. So hopefully there's zero inches in my cabin. Let's go. Come on, Daddy. like a weasel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't know you were seeing in there, sorry. I'll get you your dinner. So far, we're up to about 12 inches on the ground. <sighs> And we're due for another storm. So, uh, it's just kind of how it's been, is everything all in one shot, I guess. So, I'm guessing by the number of pushed off connectors, these are our insulators, the electric fencing, that somebody must have got kicked up against the fence, kicked it, pushed on it, or something. So, there's a whole bunch of them on this whole line that have popped off. And that won't happen unless somebody pushes on it. This is a electrified coated wire and it's great stuff. So this stuff is all electrified. The little black lines on here are the uh, slots. Oh my goodness, where did you come from? The little jumping kangaroo bunny. Huh, are you a snow kangaroo? Poor thing, okay. Let's get inside. It's actually deeper than it looks. What'd you find over there? Daddy, you coming in the front? Ooh. Don't come in? All right. Oh. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Um, I did good thinking about the doors. Oh, there's an area right there that a lot came in. Wow. Right here, it says from the windows. And you gotta let the dog in. Hi, Carl. All right, so over here, this is kind of different. I wonder why this is all covered in snow. Um, oh, right here. So it's coming from above somewhere hmm. so I'm definitely glad I went through and as much as I could cover up all the cracks in here it's helped keep the snow out and the spray foam guys when they go through and spray foam they will actually get all those little cracks so I won't have to worry about that take some time leave this video a thumbs up it really helps out my channel and it also helps small up my channel too if you guys are subscribed so hit that subscribe button and the bell So we have our little buddy portable propane heater. This is actually used in Eric's deer blind. But anyway, we're not using it, so I am gonna use it in here, only while I'm working. These things always thread backwards. I know every single person has always told me, righty tighty, lefty loosey, but there are instances where lefty is actually tidy, which in this case, going left tightens it, going right loosens it. Ooh. Okay, it is working. 
it is heating up like a lot. <laughs> Look at this. It got down to one degree today. And I mean, got down today because it always gets colder before it gets warmer, at least in our area. Oh, shoot. I just realized I got to run to the barn for a stripper and a hooker. And when you find her, make sure you send her my way. Ha. Huh. Very funny. You know, I really do have to give you guys a lot of credit. There is one thing that not one person has heckled me on, and I am just beyond belief shocked. It's an absolute mess that's inside here. And I've seen other people doing construction projects, and I don't know how they keep it nice and tidy because most of them are in areas that are not accessible with power. <sighs> so I think once I get all the wires stripped, that'll probably be the big portion of the mess. Do you hear that? What is that? It's that thing. You hear that? All right, guys, let's get stripping. No, I don't mean it like that. We're gonna strip the wires and turn them into hooks. Get your mind out of the gutter, seriously. Why won't my buddy heater stay lit? Why won't my buddy heater's pilot light stay on? If you've ever had that issue, I got a solution for you. The solution isn't leaving. I don't know why talking was that bad. All right, fine. So here is my buddy heater. Of course, make sure your stuff is all off. Just double check. And the pilot light will not stay lit. Now, there is an easy fix that you use rubbing alcohol and Q-tips to clean this unit and cause it to stay lit. So we are going to give this a shot and see if it works. And again, the symptoms are basically snap, crackle, pop, and whine. If you're older, you might not hear the high-pitched whine, but believe me, it sounds awful. Okay, first we're going to pop this out, I guess. Just forcefully remove it. Okay, take your rubbing alcohol. For those of you who don't have rubbing alcohol, vodka will work just as fine. How dirty that is. I'll get the inside a little bit more. And, uh, don't want to don't get too much liquid down in there because this is flammable. So keep that in mind. I don't want to pour it down in there. All right, so hopefully that'll do the trick. A little bit on that side and that side. Okay. Ooh, cat back on. There. Okay. I want to turn this on. Make sure the gas is flowing into the line. Give it a second. Okay, lit. I'm gonna hold it for a few seconds here. Okay. Oh. We got some interchanging flames going on there. So now we're going to change it to low. I can hear it whistling. I hear it whistling still. I feel heat coming off. All right. So hopefully, hopefully we will have some heat this time. I had to run for the hills the last time because it was so cold i could work for half an hour but man it was just it was bad look at that it just doesn't know what to do ah come on buddy there might be a little bit of hay stuck down on that terminal too oh i'm not even gonna try turning it up to high just yet it didn't work <laughs> 
cannot win on this chef. <laughs> well, all right, let's get to work before I freeze to death. <clears throat> well, it wasn't supposed to snow today, but apparently it is. Really feel sorry for those of you on the East Coast, the Northern East Coast that are getting hammered this year <laughs> with snow. You definitely have my sympathy. All right, we need to talk about something. I know this is really burning some of you guys and others of you guys are just like biting your nails on it. So let's, let's address the elephant in the room right now. Okay, I've gotten so many messages about using these staples. I'm not sure why everyone is calling them fencing staples because they're not fencing staples. A fencing staple is twice that big. Um, and it's got giant barbs on it. These do not have barbs. So this is the box of staples. 500 staples, half inch NM cable staples. Uses for framing and general construction applications. Secures two conductor 14, 12, or 10 NM cables. Features recessed head, protects cable insulation. Place staple over cable and install using hammer. Now, um, the reason I'm using these is this is what we had on hand. This is actually what we installed all of our wiring in the barn with. Obviously, if you hammer it like a mad person, you're going to smash it into the cable and probably damage your cable, which honestly, I'm going to say that I actually have damaged a little bit of some of my cables, but not from the staples. It's actually... I'm trying to pull it into these freaking fuse box things. My gosh, those are such a pain in my butt. That is what I saw damaging my cables more often than not. And some of them I had to pull further through and cut off the tips because they were a little mangled. And I just didn't want to deal with it. But these, like right here, these are loose. I gotta staple those back in. So what I did with these is I installed them loosely just to make sure that I had the slack that I needed. So I could um, basically tack it up here, keep it in place, but I uh, still have the power to be able to slide it and move it if I needed to, which I did a lot of. So then I can go back through and hammer that nice and tight. Um, if you want, we can do an experiment and hammer the death out of these and see if it will actually bust the cable. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. I've got some short little lengths of cable that I'm not gonna use for anything. We're gonna do a test on these and actually see if uh, if you beat them to death, if they will damage the cables. Let's go. I didn't record any of that. Are you kidding me? I am ready to cry right now. The cold does some bad things to your brain. I literally just did an entire <laughs> 20 minutes of explaining the staple and how it behaves on the wire. And I'm so mad. I just, I didn't even hit record, or if I did, it didn't stick because it's so cold, my hands can't feel anything. Um, this really sucks. Maybe I'll do another demonstration another time, but I have to get moving before I freeze to death. <sighs> Long story short, I beat this cable into this 2x4. It actually has an impression. I beat it in there so hard, it dented into the wood. This was actually in the wood. And it was in here like this. Okay. See the two wires, the, the two arrows were right where the staple was. So anyway, there wasn't a mark at all on the Romex coating and on the wires, there's no mark either. The only mark I actually received this entire thing 
was on the back. You can see it actually nicked the white and the black, and that was for me trying to pry the wire back off with this hoof pick. So the bottom line is you stand more of a chance of damaging your wire trying to pry it back off with a staple than you do actually stapling it. And that's one advantage of the hammer and nail staples, they're not really staples, but they're nails, is that you probably could take a pair of pliers and pop it off pretty easily without damaging anything. Where this, if you hammer it on super, super tight, you're not gonna be able to get it off without risking damaging the wire. So these are less forgiving, uh, the other ones are more forgiving, but these bottom line, just hammering them in, absolutely will not damage your nail, period. Period. Yeah, they're good. to be my office slash cabin. Um, it's gonna start out as an office, it's gonna transition into a cabin down the road. So I have to kind of make it all inclusive from the very get-go. As far as it being off-grid, the reason we are doing it off-grid is because it's going to end up being moved down further, much further away from the house once we start building our main house. Initially, when we started this project, we had planned on connecting it into, there's a little utility pole over there. And we had two breakers. They were both 15 amp breakers. So that's what we were gonna connect it into was 30 amps of power. Hence the uh, 30 amp, two 15 amp breaker panel up here. Now, you're gonna notice that it is not connected. There is no uh, wire pull coming down. The reason for that is, well, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how power is going to come into the box from the off-grid units. So I can't really put anything in there just yet. Although, Eric did point out that um, besides my junction box being right in the way of the pole, uh, this 2x4 is also right in the way of the pole. So, um, I decided that I'm probably going to have to move my breaker box. So it's probably going to have to go from here over to here, which means cutting all that. Not fun. Until I know what cables have to come in and how it comes in, I'm not going to worry about this just yet. And that's why I didn't start with this because I really didn't know exactly how I was going to run the cables for a solar setup. There might be other components coming in. There might be other things that I have to do. So this is kind of a mystery right now. I'm researching it. If you guys have any links that I should look at as far as wiring it for off-grid power, whether a generator or solar or winds, put the links down below. I'm checking everything out right now. Thank you. So I'm thinking I might have to replace one of these lines. I'm not excited. It means I'm going to have to go out and buy another roll of cable. Um, so this one right here, which was the one that I was struggling with, this one got gouged right here when I was trying to feed him back through these holes. Remember how I said that I really don't like the gang boxes that have the pinch claws inside of them because they stand a chance of ruining your wire? Well, case in point, this one did. Um, this is an insert that I felt I probably needed, but it actually kind of made things worse. So this, um, actually I cut that a little bit short. It's supposed to have an inch going into the box. And then right here, this wasn't from my knife, okay? Obviously my cut was up here. That wasn't the knife cut. This cut right here was from this plastic thing. Pulling it through, it caught the edge and it actually sliced it. Now when I checked the line, it didn't have any nicks in the wire, but I just don't like the look of it and there's a good chance that that might not pass inspection and rightly so I mean there's a nick in the raw mix a big nick so to err on the side of caution I think I'm just gonna pull that whole line out it's not very long it just runs from here into there but that is my main power line 
to be able to wire this up right here. So to save myself some time, I'm just gonna go get another 25 feet of raw mix for 10 bucks and uh, pull it out and rerun it. And I think it'll be fine. Cause I'm just, I'm just not happy about that at all. Did I mention it's really, really cold in here? It is so cold. My chest is feeling great, but my legs are cold. I need heated pants, heated socks, and heated mittens, and then we'll be all set. All right, well, let's get wiring up some of these power outlets. <laughs> So they make these little wire gauges. Make these little wire gauges on here. Um, the only thing is I'm not in agreement with the wire gauge just because from what I read online to wireless to code, you actually can't have that much wire. So these are pretty cool because they actually label the different outlets for you. So you got hot wire is gold, white wire is silver, easy enough. And then the green is your ground. Now these do have, um, push slots in there, which I do not recommend, and some places do not even allow them. So I don't recommend just sticking it in the back because one, it's impossible to get it back out. And two, uh, studies say that they're not always reliable. So um, when in doubt, they say to just hook it up to the screw terminals. So this is a two element uh, gang box. It's gonna have a switch and it's gonna have a plug. So I know you guys are like really wondering how I'm gonna work this out. So here's what we have going on. Uh, we have our three copper wires here, which we're gonna go ahead and just uh, twist. I always twist them the wrong way to start for some reason. 
So you've got your power wire coming in the bottom and the trigger at the top. So our trigger wire is right here. So guess where he's gonna go? Yep, he is gonna go right here. So we're gonna do our whites. We're gonna bring them all together. So these guys are all gonna come together, hopefully. So one camera change and a little bit of sit down thought later. Um, yeah, I know you guys are probably saying you're overthinking it and you are correct. Um, but the other problem I had was these stinking little wing nut things just did not want to stay tight to those wires. And I think in this instance, um, those push connectors would really come in handy. Typical day. Um, okay, so we have our main power wire. This is the main power coming in. And he's connecting up here at the top. So this is our three-way junction right here. Um, so power is going to come into the light switch at the bottom, right? Because you want, you want the power coming in the bottom. And then the top is what it feeds to. So the top one is feeding to the light right up there and up to there. And uh, over here, it's coming into this junction, which comes down to this wire here which actually comes down to that plug and then over to that plug. So, and that actually comes right here. So the problem that I was getting stuck on was the fact that power coming in, power going out. Um, I've read a lot about not double connecting to your outlets in case it fails, but this is the normal way it's connected. So I think that this will be okay. So anyway, so that guy's gonna connect there. Similarly, we have our white wires. So obviously there's no white wire on your light switch. So you have the extra one connected up to here. One white is going up to your lights. One white is going down to continue the line down to that outlet. And the other white is going to connect to this outlet. See, he's got two terminals right here. And then the white, which is on your main line right here, is going to connect to the other one. And then pretty much the same thing with your grounding wires. Um, one grounding wire is going to connect here. One grounding wire is going to connect here. And this little guy, he gets just a little wing nut. One of these is to keep him from poking everybody. So, I feel like I'm doing like the little pigs. Anyway, um, so the reason these don't need another junction wire is because they're already tied up together. Look at, they're all twisted. Duh, I don't know why I didn't think of that, but, um, you know, overthinking things as usual. Okay, so he's tight, everybody else is tight, I've already pulled on them. They should be good. So I'm going to finish getting this wired up, and then it should look a little bit less crazy, but... To my knowledge, this is how you're supposed to leave it set up for the wiring guy to come in. Just like all floppy, ugly looking like that. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, my front lens is dirty on this. So we had talked about, briefly, probably just in the comments, about GFCI. Now, I had mentioned briefly, again, maybe it was in the comments or in the video, I don't remember. GFCI outlets have been sold out everywhere. I have not been able to find any. Um, someone else pointed out that because this is considered considered an outbuilding, it is required, potentially, to have a GFC outlet at the start of every line. So that'll work fine. All right, so you got a GFCI up there, and then the next one will be right there. So I'm going to have to, sorry, right there. I'm going to have to pull him out and swap him. Um, I did find a GFCI in the barn. Oh, look at that found one in the barn so he's gonna go probably right there the other one's gonna go up there everyone's gonna be happy and uh I even found another plug I think he's black but oh well Oh, 
and you guys were asking about these. Yes, I had actually picked up a bunch of these. Um, I don't even know if I marked. Shoot, I should have marked on here which holes needed them. And I don't remember which, so I'm going to have to measure them again. But these are nailer plates. You just put them on there. And it prevents you from putting a nail into the stud and hitting the wire. So according to code, they're supposed to be one and a quarter inch like this one right here probably looks like it it's gonna need one probably because i don't think he's one and a quarter inch from the edge and i don't know about that one so <laughs> uh, i bought like as many of these as i needed but i didn't mark which stud they needed to go on which is kind of dumb yeah so that means i'm gonna have to remeasure Unfortunately, you have to wait until the next video to watch me wire up the light switches because that's going to be another fun one too. There's three switches. So, yeah, stay tuned for the next video after this video. Hopefully, we'll have everything finished up and ready for electrical inspection. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate you guys. Um, take some time to leave this video a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and also helps out my channel too if you guys are subscribed. So hit that subscribe button and the bell. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. What did I say again? All right. Well, I'm off to find a stripper in the barn. <laughs> I forgot what to say. <laughs> Um, I never get any of your good ones on camera. You just have to be ready for it. I can't be recording 24-7. I don't plan these things, it just happens. That's what she said.